you're a runner like I am, then the past six months of social distancing and dealing with COVID-19 has had to be difficult for you. I'm sure you've signed up for races and they've been canceled or postponed until 2021, or they've offered you the option of a virtual race. And by this point, six months in, if you've tried to avoid it, you're probably itching to get in on a race. And so maybe you are considering finally going with a virtual race. And so that's why I've done that. And today I'll be talking to you about the three pros and cons of a virtual race. First, the pros. Number one, it keeps you motivated. Now, if you're like me, you get motivation by signing up for a race. What I like to do is sign up for a race a few months from now and then put a training calendar together. This allows me to keep motivated, keep on top of my running for each day in the calendar and get me into the best shape possible for the race. In my case, it really helps a lot to sign up for a race and give me that accountability with paying my money for a race and having a date in my calendar for the race. So if that keeps you motivated as well, then signing up for a virtual race is a great way to keep yourself mentally and physically motivated with running during social distancing. Number two, you're still supporting a cause. Now many races are out there to support a cause, whether it's to fund research for diseases, provide more awareness on social issues, or help fund something in the community. But these races are put together to help support those causes, and of course, some money is already put into those races to help ultimately fund for some bigger causes. And so now, with COVID-19, a lot of these races have been affected. So by doing the virtual versions of them, you can still support the cause, give money to them, even though the live event isn't happening. And especially since the live event isn't happening, these races certainly likely have been affected with a decline in attendance numbers and as a result, a decline in their money and expectations for funding for these causes. So if you are somebody who cares a great deal or signed up for a race that was supporting a cause, still signing up for that race virtually allows you to donate your money to that cause while still keeping yourself in good running shape. Number three, you still get the perks. Now look, I'm not the type of person that's huge into the race goodie bag, but maybe you are. And if you do sign up for certain virtual races, you still get that. You get a t-shirt, you get a bib, you get a medal, and what they will do is mail those to you rather than you going to the packet pickup. And now, maybe it's not that same in-person experience that comes with a packet pickup and you're going into giant convention center or a huge building where a bunch of running vendors are accosting you, like, no, I don't want to try this sample of goo. Uh, but if that's what you're into, if you still really enjoy that goodie bag, getting a finisher's medal, that can still happen with many virtual races. Now for the cons. Number one, it's not a live event. This is huge. This is what I love the most about races. The huge number of people in attendance, the community, the camaraderie, the adrenaline flowing through you. This is what months of training leads up to, to getting right there at that live event in that morning of the race, getting up there and just running. All the people cheering for you with their dumbass signs, I mean, this is why we love races so much. And unfortunately, in this time of COVID-19 and social distancing, we just cannot get that true live event experience that make races so much fun. Unless, of course, you manage to find some friends, have them socially distanced properly along your route. But again, it just will not be the same feeling as the live event of a race. Number two, water and bathrooms. So once again, this all depends on the nature of your virtual route, but there are no water stations or restrooms. So you've got to prepare appropriately with water or dealing with the fact of what may happen when nature calls, particularly difficult if you're running a much longer race. Now I found myself in a virtual race in that same position. I was just running a quarter marathon and all of a sudden I needed to change my route and head back home so I could use the bathroom. Quite the emergency situation. We don't need to get into it. 
but you just have to know that with a virtual race, you've got to be prepared. Have enough water, be prepared for the circumstances that might happen, so all the conveniences that could come with a live race, or even the essentials, obviously, of water and bathrooms, are just not available on a virtual route. You've got to make sure in advance of being aware of that or of at least setting up your virtual route in some way to accommodate that appropriately. Number three, the environment. So you're not actually signing up for the race you signed up for. What do I mean by that? Well, if you signed up for a race to experience a flat course, you might not experience that on your virtual route. With a hilly course, or maybe you signed up for a race just to experience the beautiful views along the course. That's not going to happen with your virtual race. You're basically signing up to experience a race somewhere around where you live that accommodates for social distancing. Hell, your virtual race could just be on the treadmill in your house. So as a result, you're not really getting the true experience and environment of the race that you signed up for. And so that may have an effect on your whole desire to spend money or sign up for such a race because you want that environmental experience. It also has an effect even on training. For example, for me, I live in a rural area of the country, so I run on gravel roads now. So I had to buy a completely new pair of shoes. I'm used to being a pavement runner. All of the races I had signed up for were in cities. So now I'm adjusting to gravel road running and trail running. And what does that mean? I've accepted I won't be breaking any personal records in 2020. So just understanding what you're getting into signing up for a virtual race in that way and that con that can come with it of it not truly being the race you signed up for. So in conclusion, in assessing if you should run a virtual race, it really comes down to you thinking about why it is that you run. Now if you run for motivation, uh, to support a cause, or to get that finisher's medal that you can post on Instagram, go ahead and do it. You'll accomplish all of those things via a virtual race. But if you're doing it to accomplish some personal goals or uh, some personal experiences or really getting the full experience of a live event that makes a race so great, you're just not going to accomplish that with a virtual race, unfortunately. And so you're better off saving your money just running and exercising as much as you can in this time of social distancing until we can get to a point that live races can return, hopefully, in 2021. Well, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below or comment in any way on this video. If you like it, please do click the like button and please do subscribe to this channel as well for more videos from me. And look, hopefully we can get through all this. Stay safe, stay healthy, keep exercising, and hopefully I see you in a live race in 2021.